Definitely. So first things first, let's heal up the brother from Go Black. Right, go black to Africa. Don't um know his uh his name name or what he's called, but I know him as our man. He says the man, not your boy. You know, <laughs> here's your man and not your boy. And so we've been working to do this video, you know, do this um teaching, you know, the teaching on the word kush or kushi, kushi. Kushi in the Hebrew, right? Kushi in, I can't say modern Hebrew, but also biblical Hebrew is one of the words that corresponds with the the N word, like the N word or the, you know, if you go from the more, the, the Latin, in the Latin with the Niger, the whole Niger, even Niger in the Bible. Now, Niger is spelled like N I. G-E-R. Like when you go to the scripture, we have N-I-G-E-R. But then, right, let's just bring this up right here. Then we have um, Niger. Okay, let's go to Niger. Just so, We just want to do this really, really quick. And like we said, when I heal up, go black to Africa. <laughs> go black to Africa. So let's get Niger. Now remember, Niger, we have like Nigeria, right? We have a place called Nigeria. Then if you look at old maps, you got what they call Negro land, Negro land, right? Negro land, like that's it. That's in the west of the continent. But then if you look at other maps, even older than that, it will say Ethiopia. Either it will say on some maps, you see where it says Ethiopia inferior. And then when you go to the east, it says east and the central to south, it says Ethiopia superior. Right, so they have some different terms they use, but it's basically Ethiopia upper. Then they have this term too, and West Africa, right, with what we call West Africa. What on some of the maps is some of the, the ain't right, <laughs> ain't fully right. You know, Israelites. You know, the latter day Israelites, the ISUPK, the Alphabet Boys, as some would say, right. The thing that we have that against them that they're not really learning the Hebrew the way they should and big up to go black to Africa. He really pointed that out, you know, with learning the Hebrew. We'd like to do a whole video where we kind of just zoom in on one particular, a couple of particular videos, but there's a few videos in each one of his videos, especially the ones he's been releasing concerning the, um, you know, um, we the black Jews, let's say it like we say it. We the black Jews of the lion of the tribe of Judah, you know, but we the black Jews and Hebrews and Israelites and, you know, the, the Kyrie and the, the Kanye and, you know, the most recent things that have been coming forward. Got to check out Farrakhan when Farrakhan says the same thing they was doing to him, you know, um, they're doing now to Kyrie and, and others. But there's a little bit difference, you know, a little bit of a difference right there. But here on the whole Negro nigger and the Zona van, the Zona van is one of the worst cockamamie kind of dictionaries we've seen, you know, in studying real biblical Hebrew, you know, of we, the black Jews, we as Israelites, right, and we as Hebrews. Now, Hebrew doesn't refer to the racial, but Hebrew refers to the spiritual. I, we'll get into more detail. Just want to put that on the beam of ones. You know, we'll pick up on that. But here, this is about the N word. Did you know that the N word, right? The N word, the so called Negro, and then there's a different forms of it. They'll say nigger. Notice how to say nigger, and they have two G's. This is educational, educational purposes right here. The two G's. But notice right here in Acts. Of the apostles, chapter 13, verse 1, you see the highlighted word is how, how you say that. How, how they teach us, or how they, <laughs> we can't even say they teach us, but how have they made us to believe English, make believe English? They say, well, 1G is Niger, right? J, 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 a J sound. 2G's is nigga, gu, gu, gu. Then we say nigga, gu, gu, right? But here's the, the root of it right here, right? You N I G E R. This is from the Niger, right? Now, Niger, what do you say? Niger means black. Go black to Africa. Or I and I, the new generation of Rastafari, 
You know, it's supposed to be as black American Rastafari, Rastafari Jews, Rastafari Israelites. We say go forward. But we big up, heal up, go black to Africa. Excellent work right there. You know, keep the I and I and I prayers and, you know, make I and I link forward. Definitely, you know, but keep up the good work. Definitely, you know, some really inspirational co-laboring that we see going on in this present time because this is the time. You know, we got to get into our true mind, our divine mind. So strong concordance here is the G3526. You see the transliteration, it says, let's bring it out right here. It says Niger, or it says Niger, right? Well, N-I-G-E-R. Now, see, that's the funny thing about the grimoire, the grammar, the grammar, the grimoire. You know what grimoire is? Well, a practical application of grimoire is the grammar. Hmm. Language. You remember how to make a slave or Willie Lynch or slave papers? There's a section called Control Language. Hope Go Black to Africa pick up on this and you know the way he does his presentation. So much more refined, but the content. I definitely love the content, you know. Like we say, we like to get into a little bit of a positive pro, you know, pro black commentary. But here we're touching on the Kush. The Kush connection. And this is to reprove, you know, you know, some of the latter day Israelites who have broken, you know, broken branches from the royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews. I'm talking about the 70 AD, 1970 AD Israelites, you know, that try to make a disconnection with the continent of um, Africa, called Africa today, then called Ethiopia. Now, remember, the biblical for Ethiopia is Kush. So they said, we're not, we're not, we're not Kush, we're not Ham, right? In, in the way they say, we're not Ham, we're not Kush. Well, give thanks to Go Black to Africa and, and the, the, the brothers and sisters studying the Hebrew, looking at the Sephora software. It's in the video. Which video is that? It's in the video. Um, the title of it, I think, is... Um, what a Jewish Jew rabbi says about black Americans, right? And he put the J and the three and the W, you know? And rabbi is the R and the at sign and the A-B-B-I, I think, you know? Um, what they say, it's a more recent video. He has a couple of more fire videos he's uploaded recently. Got to check it out, but still want to get, get this work to put in right here. So let's put in this work on the the Kush, Kush, to say Kushi in the East. Not just among the nowadays um, um, Jews and, and, and European Jews in the state of Israel, but also among some of the later day um, 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 so-called Arabic or Arab or Arabian or Middle Eastern so-called. All these are like latter-day terms. There was no Middle East before World War II. Let's just put that on the beam up, put that on the table, so to speak. You know what I mean? There was no Middle East before World War II. We got proof, proof. We, we can prove this. In fact, it was developed by Middle East. Um, <laughs> it was developed by correspondence, right, during World War II time in that particular region. And they basically called the Middle East. Really, what you call and they call the Middle East is just Far East Africa, Far East Ethiopia. We have a term, we call it Ethio, Ethio Arabia, Afarabia, Afarabia, because we know that the, these, these land masses are connected, the whole Suez Canal thing to try to separate it. So there's a lot of things that went on, right, to try to make us a slave, right? That's why I point to the Willie Lynch paper about controlled language. And one of the, I think, the most powerful statements we picked up recently on what our brother Go Black to Africa spoke to, right, and brought forward to, to enlighten and wisen up and wisen up our people is concerning the Hebrew language. You know, there was a time when the so-called um, black um, people, right, that was brought over here, we the once lost now found black and brown people of the Beit, yes, the Beta Israel, when we as the Beta Israel was brought over here, they didn't want us to read, right? They want us to read. And see, that all kind of emanates out of that Willie Lynch, what's called the Willie Lynch paper. The section on control language, make note, take note. We'll follow up on it more. 
want to zoom in and put in this work on revealing to our people that the term kushi, which is saying like a kush, kushite, kushi, is used by latter day, um, latter day so called Arabs, Arabian people, so called Middle Eastern people, and Jews to basically say nigga. So, in other words, when they say kushi, kushi, this is used over there as a pejorative, right? So, the identification of the people that are translated in the King James Bible as Ethiopian, are you not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? You know what that is? That's Amos 9 and 7. Take note. Are you not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me? In the Hebrew, it reads something like, are ye not as the B'nai Kushim unto me, O B'nai Yisrael? So look at that divine. This is Yahweh, right? Yahweh, Hakadosh Baruch Baruch Hashem, right? Elohe Yisrael, the God, the Almighty Power of Yisrael, is speaking this oracle, right? A prophetic oracle, saying, "Are you not saying? Are we not as the B'nai Kushim?" Now, B'nai Kushim, in another way of looking at B'nai Kushim, since Kushi. Right in the modern uh, state of Israel and them regions around there, also among the Latter Day Arabs, it refers to nigger. So when they say Negro, when they want to say nigger or Negro, right? They basically say Kush, Kushi. They say Kushi. So now remember we talked about the Zondervan dictionary. This is why we're going to blow that up right there. We said this before in another video, but people got caught up into some of these. Um, how can we say? Um, on a certain level, we have to say they're cults, right? It's hard to say that about with fellow, you know, fellow Hebrews and Israelites. But but when they go to abbreviate and deviate, right, our ancient history and culture following after some Zondervan Bible dictionary and not putting in that work linguistically for themselves, then we have to say that's not culture, that's like if you cut the word in half, you have cult. You know what I'm saying? It's not cult. It's not the full. It's like, it's like, you know, you caught up on a trend. <laughs> Trends change. You know, and this is what we see about these cults. One cult breaks away. The 1970 AD Israeli School of Universal Practical Knowledge, they broke away from the Royal Order of the Ethiopian Hebrews going back to the Roaring Twenties where we get our real roots of our resurrection of the consciousness. So a lot of nowadays, a lot of days, you know, our people today, they'll say, well, yes, yeah, the Hebrew Israelites, you know, and the, and the One West, so forth and so on. And they don't recognize that's a broken branch from the true roots, right? The true roots is broken off from the true roots. So yes, there's some there's some truth there, right? But it says, give us, right, the teaching of his majesty. We don't want no devil's philosophy. A lot of devil philosophies have crept in, right? What's a devil? A devil. Basically, the word devil, diablos, mean a liar, slander. So it's a liar and a slander. Let's bring this up right here. We hold that right there. The the Niger is it Niger or is it like the phonetic say Niger? You see right there Niger Nig Niger Niger. But they'll fool you. See, this is where they do that magic. Not magic. It's like sorcery. It's like wordcraft. It's like Babylon. What's Babylon? Remember Babel, Babel, Babylon, the Tower of Babel, where the languages, the linguistics were confused. So you see N I G E R. We're told that's Niger, right? But the phonetics underneath says N-E-E-G apostrophe hyphen E-R, Niger. Then Thea definition says, what is it? How are we going to say this? Niger or Niger? It equals black. So what you think? Which way you think it should be said? <laughs> Who was Niger or Niger, right? It was a surname of the prophet Shimon, Shimon or Simeon, right? Notice the origin. It's of Latin origin. Mm. That's interesting. It's of Latin origin. Even though we are looking in the New Testament of Rit Hadasha, right, which has been translated, they say, from the coin of the Coptic uh, Greek, the coin of Greek. But here from the coin of Greek, we have a Latin word. And this Latin word or, or name, really, this is a name. We, we read the fuller context, we'll find out it's a name, right? It's a noun, masculine, part of speech, origins of Latin origin. Strong's definition says of Latin origin, black. 
Niger, like Nigeria, right? Nigeria, right? Or is it Niger? A Christian, in other words, according to the scripts, a Nazarene, right? So who was this right here, right? Some say it was it was a Simon of Serene, right? Who carried, helped the Moshiach, Yeshua, Robeno Yeshua, I and I Rabbi, the Rabbi of Rabbis, our Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua Hanotri, Jesus of Nazareth, known as Yeshua HaMoshiach, to carry to carry the cross, or that wood, the cross beam of 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 that, that cross beam of wood, what they call the cross, because it was set across a tree. But here, Acts thirteen and one says, Now there were in the church. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch, Antiochia, certain prophets. So now, Antiochia is what we call, if you look at the map, it would be what Turkey, with a place called Turkey, like Turkey today. You know, before it's called Constantinople, before that, Byzantium, before that, it was where the Hittites, remember the Hittites, they were a people of the Canaanites. Keep that in mind. Take note. That was in Antiochia, certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Shimon and Simeon. Now, Shimon, Simeon, that was his Hebrew name, Shimon. Shimi, Shama means to hear, Shimon, right? Simeon, Shimon means hearing. That was called. Now, remember, his name was Simeon, but he was called Nigger. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you heard me. You hear? His name was Simeon. Pause, pause. His name was Simeon that was called what? That was called who? That was called Nigger. Or, or, or they'll say, no, 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 no. It's Niger. Why is it Nigger? It means black. So what does Negro mean? Black, right? So it's not the same. And it's from Latin. Negro is from Latin. Why is it the same word? This is where they play these Babylon word games, right, to confuse you. Make you doubt the truth that you already can see and hear and you can put together, right? Make this make sense. It makes sense, but if you be naive then, right, and not the word of truth from I and I, from us, then you're going to be just caught in the trap Babylon, you know? Babylon. Babylon become a cage. Anyway, Simeon, that was called nigger. So he was, he had a name. You know, like if you ask somebody, what's your name? What's your name? Right? And what are you called? Right? You know, there's a difference between what somebody's name is. You know, like most of us, you know, if we come from a certain experience, most people might not even know our name unless they are really good, close friends with us. You know, we grew up with them. We got a common experience. They don't really know our name. They know what we are called. Right? So here, check out the breakdown here. Acts 13, right? And one, we have Simeon that was called nigger. <laughs> I kid you not. He was called nigger. He wasn't called a Negro. He was called nigger, right? Or Niger, which means black, right? And Lucius of Serene and, and Manaean, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. So we're just going to pause right there, right? Pause on that. Now, why is this important? This is important because of this right here. Remember, it's Latin origin. Transliteration make you believe if you had the I and the A behind it, you would basically have the country called Nigeria. You add an I and an A behind Niger, according to transliteration. But you look at the phonetics, right? Phonetics. Remember, the phonetics, see, the transliteration is how they want to write it, right? From the original, where you see the Greek up on top, the coin of Greek. But the phonetics, it says how it's said. Nig, nig, er. It almost sounds like how the racists, clacker, cracker, you know, how the racists will say, Neger, neger, you know, neger. That's exactly how the phonetics brings it out. A equals black, right? Well, let's bring this over here to all this whack stuff that many ain't right Israelites be pushing hard. And they push this hard from one, from one biblical concordance, right? Written nowadays. If you notice, Zondervan is something that just popped up, right? If you look at older biblical concordances, Right? The clear thing it mentioned, right, it connected both the Ethiopians I mean, the Kushites, both with like the Negro link as well as with the Shemitic link. This is why the biblical verse in Amos 9 and 7 says, Are ye not as the Bene Kushim? Oh, Bene Yisrael. So it's basically speaking to the sons of Israel, to us, the Israelites, but the divine oracle is saying there's a likeness. You are like, are you not? 
as the children of the Ethiopians to me. He says to me, right? And that's the most high, the almighty. So that means we got to stop looking at it in people, men and people perspective and need validation, need them to co-sign it. Right? They'll co-sign whatever we have firmly planted in our heart and mind. It's just like to about hip-hop, any of the other things that we be doing, and then everybody else be doing it. Because even when we be doing this, they say, what's that? That's strange. That's that nigga. That's that, <laughs> that's that N-word shite. You know what I mean? But then, after a while, they be doing it themselves. You see? We didn't need the validation from them in anything else that we do that they begin to, others begin to... um What's that word? Um, what's that word? Uh, they begin to um, um, uh, like appropriate. There's another word, you know, but appropriate can fit in right here. But here's what they say. They say Ham or Ham, Ham, right? Ham is the youngest son, right, of Noah, right? According to the Zone of Ham. Born probably about 96 years before the, the flood. And one of the eight person, person, he said person, persons, right? To live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races. Look what he said. Not the Negroes. Wait, 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 wait. So the dark races, right? But not the Negroes. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. I think we need to go right here to something that gives thanks to go black to Africa, to our man for getting those clips of the brothers and sisters studying the Hebrew and going into the, what's that called? The Sephora, uh, Sa uh, Safaria, Safaria. It's a software out there, right? But just get what's being said here. Here they're saying, they're making us think that, well, Ham is a progenitor of all the dark-skinned people, but not the Negroes. Hmm. That's interesting. Not the Negroes. Really? Okay. But the Egyptians, right? The Ethiopians, right? The Libyans, right? And the Canaanites, right? Okay. Well, let's go right here. Let's let's show you this right here. We're gonna have to come out of this right here, and let's go down here to screenshots, screenshots, screenshots. Okay, we got some screenshots right here, and we haven't even gotten into some of this. Just to show you this right here, where the chief rabbi, right? One of the chief rabbis, so so Sephardic. So Get this, Sephardic. We would have thought it would have been a so-called Ashkenazi. We would have said, oh, look at the Ashkenazis, right? But what about this Sephardic chief rabbi that calls black people monkeys? But you know, when he calls black people monkeys, you know what term he uses in the Hebrew? Kushi, Kushim. Kushim in the plural, Kushi in the singular. Rabbi Yitzhak, Yitzhak Yosef, he uses pejorative term. Basically, he uses an anti-Semitic term. <laughs> yes, he does. Right? We're going to prove it to you from the Talmud. Yes, from the Talmud. We're going to prove it to you. The term is, you see right there? Kushi. You see? Kushi. Kushi. K-U-S-H-I. Now, they might play around with the letters K and C and all of that. So you might see it like in the Bible, King James Version, C-U-S-H, right? But here we have it in the more appropriate will be the letter K in transliteration. Kushi for African Americans. Uh-oh. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up. You know, I looked at this. I saved it. I said, we're going to use this. I scanned over. <coughs> but notice... He uses for who? African Americans. Notice he's calling African Americans kushi. Hmm. Really? African Americans are kushi. What about that verse in, in, in Amos 9 and 7? Amos 9 and 7. Let's just go here quickly right here. Amos 9 and 7. Amos 9 and 7. Let's go to Amos 9 and 7. Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians? Let's go Ethiopians, right? And let's go children, right? Let's go right here. Children. Let's see. Okay, okay. I, mis I mistyped it right here. Children. Here we go. Ch there we go. Children. Boom. One verse, one verse, and one verse only. Amos 9 and 7. Are ye, are y'all, it's our yous, right? Are y'all, are y'all not as the, the children, the children 
Are you not as the children of the Ethiopian under me, O children, O children of Israel, O children of Israel, saith who? Yahweh. See if Jehovah, get that there, right? There's a period there. Note that right there. Are y'all not as the children of the who? You see the Ethiopians, the H 3569. What does it say? Kushi. Kushi. So what this so-called um I, I call him an anti-Semitic racist, so-called chief rabbi, the Yitchak. My Yitchak, my Yosef. He calls what? African Americans are more better. Black Americans, right? He called, because remember Kushi, right? They say it means black. You remember we just showed you that, right? You know, the Kushi and the Niger, Kushi connection. Well, we're going to show you it right here. Kushi, right? Kushi, BDB definition. Kushi, you see what, what now they spell it with a C? So they be doing these little games, these little letter games, right? In in grammar or grimoire, the Western Gentile, White Anglo Saxon, the Wasp, White Anglo Saxon Protestant, you know, in their grimoire called their grandma. But it's a it's a form of um word magic, right? Word spell, in a sense. You gotta break the spell, learning the Hebrew, breaking the spell. Kushi or Ethiopian. Mm. Kushi or Ethiopian, we just showed you for the underlying text on the Amos 9 and 7, right? Kushi, right? The B'nai Kushim, when you read it in the Hebrew, Kushi or Ethiopian equal, says, see Kushan. What? Kushan. Their blackness, right? Kushan, right? Their blackness, right? Or Kusham, more Kusham, right? So it says, one of the descendants of Kush. Wait, 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 hold on for a moment. So Kushi, oh, it's like we say Israeli. Yisraeli, Yisraeli. Now, Yisraeli would be like Israelite in Hebrew. It's there in Hebrew. That's how it's brought out in, when you're looking at the Hebrew, right? But here they say that Kushi, right? They say one who's a descendant of Kush, the grandson of Noah through Ham and a member of that nation. Then it says right here, one of Joab's couriers. Wait, wait, who is Joab? Remember Joab? Joab... I think it was a relation, was a cousin or something like that of David, right? It was the chief of the army, Joab, Joab, right? One of his couriers, one of his runners, one of his runners. Don't they say like the Ethiopians and many of the East Africans, they'd be like winning a lot of these like marathons and everything because they're like good runners and long runners, right? That's what courier had to do. He had to run a message, run that message, right? So one of Joab, Right, who was the head of the Israelite army during the time of David the king, one of his couriers. Then it says, what, what it says? It says Ethiopian, right? The T-W-O-T -T says the Ethiopian. It's a patronomically from this. It comes from Kush. Kush. Now look right here. What's Kush? Kush, they say BDB, Browns Drivers Briggs definition says it equals what? Black. So remember, we have in Latin, nigger, right? Or Niger, if you please, right? Here in the Hebrew, we have Kush and Kushi, right? Right? Now, Kushi in that sense, if Kushi means black, then Kushi would be like my black, my black, right? Or like my blackness. Now, who is Kushi, according to the scripts, right? From the H 3568, a Benjamite. Benjamin? Who do the ISUBK and some of the other Israelites and even we, right? to a slightly different degree based on the royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews referred to as the Benjamite. They say the Jamaicans, right? The Caribbean, the Caribbean, Jamaica and the Caribbean, they say it's Benjamin. We say Yaman, Benjamin, Yaman, Benjamin, right? Mentioned only in the title, right, of Psalm 7. Hmm. They say a noun proper masculine. This is interesting. Son of Ham and grandson of Noah, what we read about this previously and the progenitor look look what it says the progenitor that means the one who like like the patriarch so to speak of the southern most peoples located in africa uh-oh so that means the people all the way south like the southern most people in africa will be like the south africans uh-oh noun proper masculine third entry the people's descendant from kush hmm kushi Noun proper masculine. The fourth entry is the land occupied by the descendants of Kush. 
located around the southern parts of the now Ethiopia. Noun proper, a locative, referring to location, right? So we have right here, foreign, they say foreign origin, really? It's interesting, we look in the Hebrew scripture and they say this is foreign, they say, just point that out, they say. Part of speech, they don't give a part of speech because it has a few different parts of speech. As we know, it's a, it's a noun proper, a masculine noun proper name. Then we have it over here as a noun proper, a locative. That means it's a name of a person and a place. So basically, it's a type of a noun, right? But Strong's definition says this right here, probably of foreign origin, probably. So the other one said BDB, Brown Drivers Briggs says foreign origin. The other one says probably a foreign origin. Let's just keep going forward for a moment, but noting what we know. Kush or Ethiopia, right? The name of a son of Ham, of Ham, and of his territory. Note this right here. Note what Strong's definition says right here. It says also, right? Also an Israelite, right? Also an Israelite. I don't want to know the truth. You, you don't want to know the truth. Because you can't handle the truth. Can you handle the truth? We're just reporting the truth. Also of an Israelite. Hmm. Wait. So so there's an Israelite. Uh, it was Cush. And, and, and also there was Joab had Israelite, had Cushite runners. Uh, and so, and then Amos 9 and 7 says, are you not as the children? All right? So one might say, oh, this is just one, or this is one over here, and this is one over here. But then in the prophecy in Amos, it says to all of us as sons, as the B'nai Yisrael, are we not as the B'nai Cushim? Now, some of the other Israelites will say, this is because the, the Cushites were, were wicked as Uk. They were really wicked. And therefore, this is saying that the Israelites are also wicked. But if you read the verse right there, it's really speaking about how the almighty power delivered right, Israel and how he delivered others. You know what I mean? And also, you know, there's a diaspora according to the same scriptures, the, you know, the same prophets. There's a scripture that speaks about the, the remnant even from beyond the rivers of Cush. You know, so there's a whole link there, even in redemption with Kush. So some of the other spellings of it is C H U S H, right? Kush, right? And C U S H and Ethiopia. But that part which says also of an Israelite, of an Israelite, right? So let's leave that verse right there. I'm going to get through this. Just stay with me for a moment, brothers and sisters. Just a little more here. So we're going to get into this one a little bit more, but also go black to Africa. He has a vid where he goes into this as well. So check out what he has as well on the Go Black to Africa. Now, of course, this article is from 2018, but what do we say? Never again. Okay, let's go forward right here. This is this is their chief rabbi, right? This is this is the one that says, he's the one that says, right? He says that black Americans or African Americans are kushi, right? And he compares us to monkeys. Hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at him right here. I mean, uh, uh, see, we could do a little split screen and stuff like that. But, you know, we, we'll leave the mocking and the scoffing to the mockers and the scoffers like this so-called chief rabbi. Right? Isn't it interesting? Their chief rabbi is a Sephardic. Right? Sephardic chief rabbi. That's like the Spanish Jews. That's a whole 1492 history right there. You know, it gets very... We need to understand what happened back then in 1492. Right. So we can understand what's happening today. Right. Even in the USA. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes, we have many of our people, you know, who are Spanish speaking and from Spanish parts of the world. But they have been even used right, against us, you know, and we can see this even from a more ancient time. Now here, this was October 22nd, 2017, not to get into all the details here, but the highlights, Sephardic chief rabbi of Israel call black people, remember it says African Americans, I want you to just link that right there, black Americans, so think of how interesting it is, so that was like 2018, right, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, five years later, you see this firestorm about the identity of we black people as, as Jews, as Yehudi, as Yehudim, right, and even the tribe of Judah, right, and Israel, and Israelite, you check it out. 
you check it out, right? So he called black people monkeys. You know, what it says, you sow the wind, you sow the wind and you reap the whirlwind. During his weekly sermon on Saturday evening, probably felt good about himself. You know, as some of the Benjamites would say, felt good. He felt good about him, dirty self. You know, fire bun. So when we, uh, Bingy, you know, we need to bun him. You know, we need to bun. These are the ones we, you know, this is the tribe. This is the way. Vizo ha derek. Vizo ha derek. But here, that was just one thing just to show you. That was like kind of a, a sneak peek, you know, more to John Wool and more to come. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where, okay. It's actually, was it in the text free? Yeah, it was over in the text free. This is what we would like to show you right here, here, here. Um, where is it? Is it? No, that's not the clip right there. Okay, it's over here. It's over here. This, we have to give thanks and credit, you know, to the brothers and sisters that was in the Gold Black to Africa video that was breaking this down. Now, this is a software known as um, Safari, right? Safari, right? Safari, S E. P H A R I A. You know, you could probably download that software there on the um well we use some Android phones sometimes, but you know, you can get it from the Google Play Store. I think it might also be in the Apple store and it's free. It's a very, very good software. We really give thanks and praise. Now, here's the Hebrew, right? Here's the Hebrew. Now, first of all, this is one of their Talmudic, right, rabbis. Well, the whole thing about rabbis and even the Babylonian Talmud, I got to just put a scrape to you that a lot of those writings that were written by our people in Babylon, the originals of those writings, right, were our people's writings. But of course, you know, after 740 AD, you know, other convert, conversos and converted to it, the Judaism, when we went more and deeper into the prophecy for our disobedience, it says that, you know, and you shall go down very low, the ethnic native people we once lost, now found, black, beta, Yisrael, black and brown, you know, in the fuller sense. And others, the stranger will rise up very high. In fact, even there's a verse in the, in the New Testament that says that he will make us, um, he, he will provoke us to jealousy for people who are no people. So there's a lot of prophecy that shows how tables turn. But as tables had turned, even turned against us, tables are turning again, even in our favor, right? But we got to put in that faith work and that real work, right? Because faith without works is dead, right? So here in Perke the Rabbi, right? Perke the Rabbi Eliezer, right? Perke is like to say that the Perke Avot. Perke Avot is advice, the ethics, the ethics of the Father. So here, this is like the ethics, right? The ethics of the Rabbi, the Rabbi, right? Eliezer, right? This one named Rabbi. Now, he, he's somebody that in, in the latter-day Jewish, like nowadays modern Jewish tradition, you know, especially amongst the, 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 what we say, the other Jews or the European Jews from 740 to the present time, he's a very important one. This this is some of their core teaching. That's what they call it, Talmud. Talmud is the operative word that means teaching. Let's scroll down here. We have this section right here where it speaks about Nimrod. Nimrod and the Tower of Babel. Just briefly here, we're going to go into a little more detail, but check out that vid on Go Black to Africa, where he has that clip of the brothers and sisters studying the Hebrew in that same video. He says a powerful thing, right? You know, the key being the, our language, right? Just as in How to Make a Slave, the Woolly Lynch Papers, it said control language. Cut us off from our native, our, our language, right? And give us a poor comprehension of this new language. In the How to Make a Slave, Woolly Lynch Papers, it's all there, there, there. Now, remember that our people were never really given the Bible, right? In fact, we basically took the Bible, and whenever we took the Bible, right, we had a different view before he, quote, so-called, gave us the Bible. It was so revolutionary. We have, for example, the classic Nat Turner example, although there's also other examples, but that is the pivotal that's like our, you could say, scriptural example is a Nat Turner example, right? We got revolutionary. He, he could not whitewash us at that time, right? But what he did is 
deny us the ability to read it under the penalty of pain, torture, abuse, you know, satanic abuse, right, and death, right, during the enslavement, enslavement time. So under the penalty of death, this is why they lynch not just black folks, but even some white folks who really believed in what they believed in as white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Christians. They believed in the gospel as they understood it. And they said, these are people too. They wasn't so much down with that, but some of them also got lynched too. So also some white folks, you know, we could say some good white folks, you know, they also suffered with us because they wanted to teach us how to read or, or give us Bible. So the white man's prohibition on teaching the so-called Negro, Negro, Niger, remember the connection, how to read and everything? It was based on this. So when you hear folks say, oh, they gave us, a, no, they gave us the slave Bible. And the slave Bible was, was you could say, an abbreviated and deviated Bible where they took out, as some people say, some brothers say, they took out all the best parts out of the Bible. You know, basically, it's the same kind of Christianity that a lot of, you know, lost black Christians and pastors be teaching to their people where they don't teach their people who they are. You know, they teach black people in the Americas and the Caribbean and this biblical prophecy of 400 years, right, that we are just Gentiles. We're not Gentiles. We're, we're the Kadosh Goy, right? We're that, we are intended to be that, that, that sovereignty of the priesthood, that holy nation. See, see, it's really in our hands. But here, under the Nimrod connection right here, Nimrod, the Tower of Babel, here it reads, Noah brought his son, his sons, and his grandsons. And he blessed them with their, in, in brackets, several, right, in open parentheses, several, close parentheses, settlements, right? So what you see in parentheses is not really there. So we're going to do just read, read what's not in parentheses, right? You can see what's in parentheses for yourself, right? Noah brought his sons and his grandsons, and he blessed them with their settlements, and he gave them as an inheritance all the earth. He especially blessed Shem and his sons, dark but comely, right? Now, you see where in, in the open parentheses it says making them dark. Now, now, let's read it the way that they, you know, with, with what they added in, right? Because here we got the Hebrew up here, right? Yeah, the Hebrew up here, right? And down here we have a translation, right? Their translation. He especially blessed Shem and his sons, making them dark but comely. But actually in the Hebrew up here, I can't highlight it because this is a screenshot right here. Let me find the parts right here. Um, right. Let me find. Okay. Yeah. It says, it says, Lishem, Lishem and Tishem, right? Ua le banayo, or the modern Hebrew said, U le banav, U le banav, but U le banayo and his sons, right? Shechorim, Shechorim, Shechorim. Right, Shachorim, 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 Shachor, Shachor, right, Shachar, you know, black, with Naim, the Naim, with Naim, right, this is this part, I'm going to try to zoom in, well, this is as much as I can zoom it in, right, we'll go through this again as we pick up, like I said, this is like a kind of a sneak peek, but this right here, just to connect the fact that the Negro, right, the, the N word is the Kushi. And if Kushi is the Ethiopian, right, as it said, the Kushite, and if Yahweh says, if Hashem says in Amos 9 and 7, right, in the prophecy, in the book of prophecy, that we are like the children of the Kushites to him, then we, we need to make this connection, make this make sense. He especially blessed Shem and his sons, dark but comely. Dark but comely. Shechorim, Shechorim, right? With Naim, with Naim. And what? Naim. It's not dark but comely. Looking up the Shechor, Shechor, singular, Shechorim, right? Like Kush, Kushim, right? Made them black and beautiful. It's like in the psalm where it says, 
I am black but comely. In the Hebrew, it's just, I am black and beautiful. It's not, you know, when you read it like that, you see the game they do with the grimoire and the translation, the grandma, and they try to confuse you. I am black. Like I say, I am black but beautiful. It's almost like they say, like, something's wrong for me being black. I'm black, but I'm beautiful. You know what I mean? You see that trick right there? It's really, I am black and so so the the conjunction is is the is the we, the we or the u, which means the we, which means and, right? We naim, u naim, we naim, and and beautiful. So you see what it says right here? Let's read it now with that knowledge there. He especially blessed Shem and his sons, U Banayo. Dark Shekharim with Naim and beautiful. He especially blessed Shem and his sons, not making them. See, they add in the making them. There's no making them in the Hebrew text up here. There's no making them, right? He especially blessed Shem and his sons, Shem, Shem, and his sons, Shekharim with Naim, with Naim, and Beautiful, and he gave them the habitable, right? The habitable earth, right? Or like there's a there's a tevel, tevel, which is the moist parts of the earth. The moist parts of the earth that have good water is what's the habitable portion of the earth, that which is good to habitate in. The moist parts of the earth. He blessed Ham, Ham Ubanayo, Ham. You remember Ham? What is it? Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and his sons. Likewise, you see the making them. They they add in that making them, right? Dark. Dark like the raven. Dark now the raven, the oreb, right? The oreb, the oreb, the, the raven. You know the raven, you you've seen the raven before. It's very black. So some we can translate this, some translate this as even the brothers and sisters on Go Black to Africa clip right there, as that Shem clearly was black. Right and handsome, and the, the sons were handsome. They were attractive, right? And Ham and his sons also were black. Here it says like the raven. So some say perhaps Ham was even darker, right? But they all were well. These two, let's put it like that, were black according to Perke de Rebbe Eliezer. What we're in in the Talmud right here, and he gave them notice. People say, oh, the Talmud, the Talmud say this, the Talmud say that. We have to do a video and break down what is Talmud, the simple, the basics. Because what one's is going off, it's like, eat the food yourself. Don't eat what somebody chuck up. You know, this is a meal right here. This is why we go through it like this, so that ones can follow up and go over the verses for themselves and, you know, refer to these things. But here it goes on, right? It says, and he gave them as an inheritance the coast of the sea. He blessed Japheth and his sons, right? You notice here, for Shem, it says making them, parenthesis. For Ham and his sons, it says making them. Here for Yafet, Ubanayo, Ubanav, it says making, and then them is outside. Them entirely white, right? And it uses Lavan, you know, Lavane, Lavane, right? Lavan, like Laban, Laban. Like Laban, the uncle of Jacob, who kept robbing him of his wages and switching the terms of the agreement. You know, almost like they say, Laban speak with forked tongue. You ever heard that? Laban speak with forked tongue. But here it says he blessed Japheth and his sons, making them entirely white, Lavane. And he gave them for an inheritance the desert and fields. When I heard them read this on the Go Black to Africa video, the first thing I thought about was the, the Berber people. You know, the Berber people. Um, and the, um, what's the other name? The Tureg, the Tureg people, right? They, they dwell like in the Sahara region presently and maybe for the last maybe thousand or so years, right? In that particular region. And they're very, it's very interesting because these are people who are indigenous to this region Right, you know, and amongst them is like darker skinned people, but a lot of we could say white or what for lack of a better word could be connected with white people. This now brings together this whole Japheth idea, right? That's being brought out here by in the Purke 
um, the Rebbe Eliezer, but gave them for an inheritance desert and its fields. Right? I think about the Sherwood Forest or something like that. These are the inheritances with which he endowed them. But here's what's very clear. What's very clear is that here in the 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 Talmudic teachings, Mishnah, the Judaic teachings, it is saying that Shem and his sons were Shacharim with Naim. Right, Vinayim. They were black. They were black ones and beautiful and attractive. And they were given the habitable earths. Right, you could say like we said, the best places of the earth, so to speak. Shem. Right. Now this is interesting because they made us believe. Right. They made us believe, like in the Zonavan um, counterfeit dictionary. I say the counterfeit because. When I, you know, when you really understand what they're trying to change, they're trying to change what our ancestors over a hundred years plus had done research on, making the connection, right, between you could say the children, right, of Yisrael and the children of the Ethiopian, especially vis-a-vis -vis the covenant, the covenant. So. With that being said right here, I want to show you this right here at the top right here. Like we said, this is in the software um, Sephoria, Sephoria, S-E-P-H-A-R-I-A. -I, -A. I think I'm spelling it correctly, but look it up. There's a software and it's a it's a it's an excellent software. I want to hear a lot of um, Avdil um, Levy. You know, Abdiel Lewi, a.k.a. Zion Lex, because he's one of the first ones. He did a video where he was pointing it out, I think maybe a couple of um, years ago, right? A couple of years ago, maybe a little bit longer, but I recall about a couple, couple, maybe two to maybe three years, you know, a few years ago. And so like to, you know, give thanks for that right there, right? And also to go black to Africa, you know, as well. But we're going to get into that one a little bit more. We're going to actually bring up, hopefully, Ja Willen, we're going to actually bring up the um, the software so we can get into a little more detail and kind of, as we say, grind on it. So this particular dictionary right here, reference here is a zone event. So who are the Negroes, right? Here in this meme right here down here, they said the dark races. Remember the word dark? Dark. Now, the word that was translated as dark, right, in that Mishnah Talmudic quote from the Perke de Rebbe, right, the Rabbi Eliezer, right, said that Shem was dark, in their translation, dark but comely. Just like they try to say that, that the maiden, not Solomon, but the maiden in Song of Songs says that I am black but comely. No, no, no. She's saying I am black and beautiful. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I am black and beautiful. But they say that Ham is a progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. Can we say this is true? Can we say this? Can we say this is true based on the Zone de Van Bible Dictionary? Right, that somehow I'm thinking of the ISUPK and these other 70 and post 70, 1970 AD Israelites that they must have stock invested in the Zone of Ann Bible Dictionary or something. I mean, they push this like it's the only dictionary concordance in the world. Maybe it's because of the kind of anti, anti what? <laughs> Anti, what, is it Ethiopian, anti Kushi? Here's what's the funny thing. If they go over to the East, this is why a lot of them talk about not going to the East. They wait for you, you know, Yahweh to crack the sky and come back. And that's not even what the scripts is really saying right there. You know what I mean? You know, you could take the Egyptian, you could take the, take the Israelite, the Hebrew out of Egypt. But you can't take the Egypt out of the Israelite. That's why a whole generation had to wander to death until all those dumb mother uckers. You know, Josh said, I, I don't want to bring them into this land, right? Because, you know, they had, you know, they were too contrary, right? In other words, you might be Israel, but it says not all who are of Israel are Israel, right? Because Hebrew. Hebrew is a spiritual qualification, not a physical qualification, according to the truth of the scripture. But you can't get that truth fully right, from the KJV. 
Right? Of course you can receive it in the Holy Spirit, but if the Holy Spirit spoke this truth that I'm speaking to you, say it's a lie because you don't see it written in your KJV, but yet you're a Hebrew, but you're not studying the Hebrew. Hmm. Wow. So who are the Negroes? That's the question. In other words, who are the Cushim? Who are the Cushim? Well, it would appear that the Ethiopians right, are, but it will also appear, based on the scripts and based on the evidence that we have presented here, the children of Israel are the Kushi. You remember that that anti-Semitic, racist, um, goofball, so-called rabbi? He's calling our people, black Americans, are monkeys. And then using the term Kushi. And they say the term Kushi is a pejorative. But wait, wait, hold on for a moment. Kushi, why is Kushi like a, a bad word? You notice that? Why is Kushi? It's like, why, when we say they're being anti-Semitic to us because we're Semitic people, we can't say that. But when they want to say that we're being anti-Semitic to them because we're saying, look at you trying to steal our identity. Look, it said that Shem is black. <laughs> you see, it's one of those ways there. Just show you a couple more of these. This is the same one. You see how these ones, they were highlighted. Not the Negroes. You know, what, what, what do they say? They said the Negroes are from Shem, right? Well, it appears, according to the scripts, that the Negroes are from Shem, right? But if Negroes, Negroes is what? Negroes is just describing one being black. According to Perke, the rabbi um, Eliezer, in the Jewish, um, we could say, the, the Jewish Talmud and the Mishnah and their teachings, right? Well, they, some of our ancient teachings, but, you know, in their possession, you know, because we turned our backs on it. You know, they didn't steal it from us like that. You know, stop, get 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 off of that. Get off of that right there. Because if you're talking about we're the Israelites and the Torah and the scripture, Lord, statue and the commandment, then you know, they didn't steal it from us, but our own people, we turn our back. Well, not we of this generation, but our ancestors did, right? But hopefully we can turn, you know, from the stray way to Yahweh, truth and life. So here's another one here. You can see the compact, the compact Bible dictionary. Right, this is a new popular dictionary going around, but you know, you know that everything that's popping is not really popping. Let's go on right here. See the Negroes, Negroes, Negroes. Right, so they will use this particular dictionary over and over to try to cut the cords of what is obvious from Amos nine and seven that Hashem Yahweh, right, that the Almighty, the Most High, has joined. Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians, the Cushim, unto me, O children of Yisrael? Uh-oh. They say we banned to. <laughs> they say we banned to. You know what I mean? Even some of our own people, some, some of the cuckoos, the cuckoos in East Africa, right? You know, that, that don't love us, that don't recognize us. Because the same way they have tried to separate us from our true Right and covenant keeping Ethiopian royal order Israelites of Ethiopia connection. They've also attempted to do this with the people east of the river now, speaking of the Ethiopians and the others over there as well. You know, so here, 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 kushi, 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 kushi. Right, let's just bring this up right here. Kushi, 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 kushi. Gonna get into all of this. Jawulan Kushite. Who were the Kushites? That's a good question. Because according to the prophecy, who are the Kushites? Are ye not as the Bnei Kushim, the children of the Kushites unto me, O children of Yisrael? So that means in Yahweh's sight, right? In his sight, not in Zonavan's sight, you know, not in some of their kooky, you know, wannabe leaders' sights, you know, but in he who be who he be sight. And Kush in the Bible. So why is Cush a pejorative? A pejorative is like a curse word. Why do they use the term Cush as the N word? They use the term Cush as the N word. This word right here, Cushy, Cushy, Cushy as a pejorative. As a bat now that's a whole other level right there. I I'll give you a sneak peek. Right? Let's let's do a sneak peek on you know, let's, let's scroll over here, okay? <laughs> not there, not there, not there, okay? Not there, not, wait, wait for it, wait for it. Uh-oh, not that, but that's interesting. E.T., Ethiopian, E.T., okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> over here, uh-oh, 
Uh-oh, Kushim. Mmm, Mitokim. Kushim, Mitokim. Mmm, Kushim, Mitokim. Why? Why? This is a big Kushim. This is, this is Ben Kushim. Ben Kushim. Right? The son of what? The Kushites? Right? Ben Kushim. Right? There's some um, stuff that, you know, some Jewish, um, um, Latter-day Jewish stuff. Right, you know, Kitani, <laughs> Kushim Kitani, little little Kushites. He's like like ten ten little Kushites. You know where that come from? It come from that book. You remember the book, Ten Little Niggas? This is in the Hebrew is Kushim Kitani, Kushim Kitani, and you see the 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 Aser Eseret. You see the number ten right there, Kushim Kitar Kitani. Kushim Ketanim. Kushim, the Kushite Ketanim. Katan, Katan, like to be small. And you see there's 10 of them. Notice that even in this picture here, they all seem to have like locks. You see that right there? They have that whoa, right? But this is, this is the, this is their um, um, Eastern European white Jewish version of 10 little niggas. You know, because, you know, they would say we never were racist. We 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 were always helpful. No, some of y'all were. Some of y'all were truthful, right? But many of y'all were not truthful, right? And that's what makes this so difficult now, right? Not because of those who told the truth, but those who persisted in telling the lies. So some of this we're gonna deal with right here. You see this right here? <laughs> oh boy, this this is this is. We'll touch on this a little bit more. There's even some playing cards. Look at that. Look, look, look at that. Lemek. 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 Lamek. Lemek. Oh, my goodness. You can see it right there. This is almost the same thing that the Crackers was doing over here. All right? All right? Because we already know how they have whitewashed, you know, Christianity. You know, our black Lord and Savior, the Rabbi of Rabbis, Rabboni Yeshua Ha. Notary, Yeshua HaMoshiach. But the same thing has been done, you know, in um, Yehudi, you know, to we, the black Jews. This was the first thing right here that I want to show you, right here. We'll we'll touch on this a little bit more. All this is dealing with, this is the Kushia, Kushia, right? You know, in the feminine sense. More on this as we move on, brothers and sisters. I'm going to end off right here, you know what I mean? You know, because it says... The seed shall be called in Yitzhak and Isaac. What does Isaac mean? Isaac means to laugh, right? It can mean to laugh, to play. It can also mean to, in a sense, it can mean to mock too. So based on now that we know that Negro in Hebrew is Kushi, right? Nigga and the N word in Hebrew is Kushi. And with this meme to seal up here, I just got to say it, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers. I so happy. <laughs> I so happy. <laughs> Notice the ten little niggas. Let's go back to that one quickly right here. The ten little niggas. I so happy. All right. The ten little niggas right here. Here's what Rahak Adosha showed me right here. You know, <laughs> the ten tribes. <laughs> Who, where, where are the ten tribes? The ten tribes. Were the ten tribes the Kushim, Kitani, the ten little Kushites, right? Or the ten little N words, the ten little niggas? Hmm. Like, share, and subscribe. Shalom, Chabarim. This is Yadin right here, here, here. L O J, Line of Judah Society. Check us out here, Rastafari Jews. Also, live stream on Rastafari Israelites. Check out the website, L O J S dot O R G. L-O-J-S dot org. Shalom, Chavarim, shalom.